Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to another tutorial in my How to Draw Great Art series. Before we start, of course, if you could subscribe, that would be fabulous. Thank you very much. And also, remember to <laughs> ring that little bell icon. Okay, well, the great art today is a self-portrait by Van Gogh. Now, he painted many self-portraits, but um, this particular one he wrote to his sister and said, I'm looking for a deeper likeness than that obtained by a photograph. So let's get to it. Okay, now the shape of his head, at this point he was quite emaciated. It was paint, painted in 1889 and he was in the asylum at San Remy at that point. So he wasn't in great shape, shall we say. And the shape of his head is quite narrow, almost like a rugby ball, that kind of long oval shape like that. Okay, in the middle, of course, we have the eyes on that line there. So let's start with the corner of his left eye. And it starts like this and goes up quite sharply, like that. And then, of course, like, almost like a straight line to the corner. And curved down, like that. And on top of that, we have the line of the eyelid, which doubles that line up and then comes down like that. And there's a kind of fold of skin that comes up just above that, joins that line and then curves away from his eye like that. Bottom of his eye is like, again, a bit of a straight line, then a, then a more of a curve coming in like that. So there's the shape of that eye there. And his pupil is looking out at you, so Pupil of his eye comes in there, the iris in the middle there, like that. Okay, now the same distance of an eye between the eyes here on that line, and this eye is more of a curve as it comes up. Slight point at the top, and then comes back down, like that. And the bottom is a kind of curve, almost like a lemon shape. See that? With that curve coming in there. And again, he's looking out here, so the Pupil of his eye comes in here, like that, the iris in the middle there. And again, double that line up, or his eyelid there, and then another line below it. And of course, he has this kind of worried look, an anxious look about him. And it has double line up, see that? That kind of anxious look we have in there. And that's made even more are prominent by the fact that his eyebrows are pulled down almost right to the centre of his nose here to get this line of his eyebrow it can be right down like that almost this is frowning which comes up over his eye like that and an arch and then around the corner of his forehead there and you get these strokes very characteristic of Van Gogh the way he uses his, his brush in short strokes like that and the centre of his forehead here, we have these kind of deep frown lines. Again, curves coming up like that, another one there. Other brown, other eyebrows start here, the curve at the top of his nose. Uh, so it arches up and then over his eye and juts out beyond his forehead here. So that's the shape of that eyebrow there. And again, uses his brush strokes to suggest the hair on his eyebrows like that. Now as I said he was quite emaciated looking so his forehead almost is, is kind of very bony you know because up and then and I've a deep curve up like that and he got his uh, little bit of hair coming in here. Now quite high forehead um, but his uh, his hair, hairline I should say, starts about here and this is actually too high I would take that down to about there probably yeah uh, his, four, his hairline comes about here, it arches up, and a higher curve here, comes around here, and there's a little point there, and then back down towards his ear, and get that gap there. Okay, now what makes the top of the head you know, look quite pointed is that his hair is swept up like that, almost like flames there, you see that? Because he's combed his hair back like that, and it goes quite high at this middle point here, 
quite high about there, all the way up to about there. You get these lines again. He uses his paintbrush to suggest the lines and the way that his hair had been combed. So that comes in like that all the way down to about there. And then we get more lines coming in there. Yeah, I'm going to carry on down like that, okay? Okay, I move down towards the ear now. The ear, I take a line across from his eyes and you get the top of his ear just coming in about there. And then that shape with the double up the outside line here. And the inside you get that little bit of skin and then the kind of circle of the inside of his ear. Another line there. Okay, his beard continues down past his ear there. But let's move on to this side now. As I said, his eyebrow is jutting out here like that. So you get the side of his face coming in just at the side of his eye there, then jutting out to his uh, that prominent cheekbone here. It's curved back in quite quickly there like that, you see? Now his nose, that's quite an aquiline nose, it's got a slight bump there. So you start from here and then out to the bump, long, and then bring it down, kind of straight, and then the other side of the nose just appearing here, then the underside of the nose there, coming up, and then you put the nostril in there, and you kind of continue that line around, and then you get the side of his nose appearing there, like that. Okay, now um, to get the mouth in, we'll put the beard on in a second, but to get the mouth in, you want to know where the centre of the mouth is, so it is and a line directly below this part here. You just bring that down and that's the centre of your mouth there. Now the centre of his lips are uh, kind of are a head shape, like that. Uh, this side curves slightly, and this side goes up more in a straight line and then curves down like that. He's obviously a rather grim look, see that? There. And the top of his Top lip comes in here, and then another short line there, and a slightly longer line come down here. And the bottom lip, a couple of lines to suggest the lines in his lip, and then come in towards that line there. Okay? Now, what he has, of course, is a beard and a moustache, dash beard, um, and it comes out from underneath the nose here, and again, he used that, um, the lines of his paintbrush to suggest the hair of his uh, moustache coming down literally almost over his top lip there. And again you get these curves coming down and it you know, sweeps out here into that bristle shape around his mouth like that. Top part of the moustache comes down like that and joins the side of his beard which comes in across his cheek like that, and you get a line coming down from the side of his nose here, there, like that, okay? Uh, we'll put in, and there's another line, you know, to suggest the front of his nose there coming down here, but we'll put in those lines that he uses for his brush strokes later, for instance, around the side of his nose, you get those, these brush stroke lines coming down this way. But we'll work on those, work on those later, okay? Um, now, his bottom part of his beard, is under his chin, you get that curve there, which goes around his chin, again, short strokes, and you get the sense that, you know, he is losing weight, you see the sense that, you know, he's got this kind of um, gaunt look to his chin as well, it goes in there, and then it comes out, down to a kind of square bit at the bottom here, <coughs> excuse me, comes around there, okay, and then joins up with the side of his jaw coming in down like that and his beard appears in there. Okay, now we have a wee bit of his hair just appearing just below here and then we go to what he's wearing. Um, now he's wearing a suit in this particular portrait, painted in 1889. He died a year later, you know, so uh, he produced quite a, a, a lot of work between this date and the date that he died. So that collar comes in. He used to wear what's called known as a pea jacket for his work, but it's a suit he's wearing just now. So there's a collar 
and uh, the kind of button down here and the other lapel the jacket appears coming in like that and again let's take a sweep down for his shoulder his progressive line here and another one there and he's wearing a collarless shirt underneath which starts in here and the other side comes in right there and folds over comes down see a wee bit of his waistcoat underneath there there's a button on his shirt there too okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to start to go back to the top again and i'm going to start to outline just to use my pencil a bit, a bit more heavily to bring out some of these darker lines here especially up here it's quite dark and now about here and that there i'll just take this um a bit out here because I started off too high with that. So that bit comes there, a little bit of hair sticking out there. So I'm going to continue right around here and say put in some of the darker areas appearing around there, around the edge, and around here, around here. And also what I'll do is work on the eyebrows and on around the eyes to make them just bring them out a bit more. Okay. Right, as you can see I've outlined a lot of the, uh, the pencil strokes, which were imitating the brush strokes. You know, you get that quite dynamic look, you know, very expressive quality that Van Gogh brings to all his works. And basically I'm just, uh, you know, putting a bit more weight on the pencil. You know, this is a 5B, uh, so it stands out a lot more. Just to accentuate these lines. And once I've done that, then I will work on uh, the, the kind of brush stroke technique that he used. As I say, a very short, expressive use of his brush and his paint and so on. Down that, for instance, you know, round about here where you have his shoulder coming in, uh, his brush strokes would go round like that and create these kind of marks. So what I'll do is, I'll start off down here just to show you, but usually he follows the line of the outline, first of all, with his brush strokes like that, and then he moves into creating those whorls and loops and swoops which we know so well of Van Gogh's work. Like that. Okay, I'm going to move to the top now just to show you. Uh, around the top of his forehead here, uh, again you follow that line and you'll see that his brush strokes kind of follow the line like that. Slightly darker there because this size in shadow. A few lines up here and these lines like that. A few lines coming up. But these are, as I said, these are imitating the brush strokes that Van Gogh used. And if I wanted to do the eyes, make them a bit more realistic, you could shade in the center very dark and then leave a highlight and do a middle tone around the outside. Leave that highlight there, like that, okay? And you get these brush strokes coming up here. Now, as I just started off telling you that the brush strokes on the side of the nose, they kind of continue down here, down towards the cheekbone, and you get a bit of shading using slightly darker strokes just under the cheekbone there. See that? You get lots of little short strokes. Don't put too much weight in your pencil and you get the sensation of the brushwork that Van Gogh used. Okay, so I'm going to continue with that, a bit, bit more work in the beard, and so on down here. Right, now I've finished the, the brush strokes of Waddle down here, and of course in this particular to the life, uh, Van Gogh used a background absolutely full of whorls and swirls and so on. Um, so again what he did was, he started by using his brush strokes following the shape, of his face, the outline like that, like coming up like that, even around here, followed it down all around there, 
Don't put too much weight in your pen. If you want to just suggest the background here. Um, the lines followed all the way down here. But very soon, as uh, the whorls almost took on a life of their own, so they started. He started making them into loops and swoops like that, and big curls. You know, using a very expressive technique with his brush. Which kind of showed a state of mind too, which was probably in turmoil a lot of the time. Just like the background here, so that would swoop up there and so on, and I come down here. And you continue like that all the way around, following the, the shape of the outline and then going off into swirls and curls and so on. I'm going to continue around here like that. Right, I've just finished off the swirls and whorls around his head and um, that will give you a good idea of the kind of dynamic quality of uh, one of Van Gogh's most famous portraits. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you can join me again for another tutorial very soon. But in the meantime, of course, all the best and happy drawing.